let's begin reading at the 20th verse. I want everybody, we're going to read together. Exodus, the 15th chapter. Let us read the 20th, beginning at the 20th verse, everybody together. And we'll read all the way down to the 27th verse. Are you with me? Y'all all right? And the Bible says what? And, and Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand. And all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Uh -huh. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Mm -hmm. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he found unto, cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. And he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, where were twelve wells of water, and threescore and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. I give you this lesson uh, that the Bible says, uh, amen, uh, Moses, uh, amen, it's a difficult, it's challenging, uh, it's challenging uh, to be a leader, because uh, as leaders, Elder Sergeant, uh, we want to keep you right by the Red Sea, uh, so you can look at the Red Sea and see what God did for you, uh, but when we lead you uh, in the will of God, uh, sometimes uh, we got to lead you in pathways uh, that is not very comfortable for us or for you, uh, but you got to follow your leader, are you all right today, uh, now, Moses, you got the responsibility. You are the lawgiver. You are, amen. You are the father and the deliverer in Israel. You have this very uncomfortable task. You got to keep the church moving. I can't hear nobody say keep the church moving. And so the Bible says that Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. And they went into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. I want to help leaders. Amen. Some of you in the midst today, some going, some are listening to me uh, under the sound of my voice by way of airway. Uh, glory, sometimes you got to lead uh, your congregation in, amen, through the wilderness. Uh, but congregation, don't leave. Uh, your apostle, your pastor, your bishop, whoever, don't leave them while they lead you in the wilderness. Uh, it's for your own growth. Uh, it's for your own development. Uh, there are times, uh, there are going to be lean times, uh, and there's going to be some fat times in your life. Uh, but follow the one uh, who God set in your life. Are you all right? today. Now Moses, uh, you led him through the Red Sea. Uh, I'm sure everybody was congratulating you. Uh, I'm sure everybody said, that's the man. Uh, ain't no pastor like my pastor. I can't hear nobody. Now, uh, you gotta take them to the wilderness. Uh, what pain? Uh, I wonder what you were going through Moses, uh, as you had to take them to the wilderness. Uh, however, you had direction. Uh, you had vision. Uh, I don't hear nobody. You may not always see uh, what your leader sees, uh, but they have vision. Uh, they're not gonna leave you there to die. Uh, come on, somebody. They got to take you through the way of testing. It's a nurturing time in your life. You got to nurture my people in the wilderness, Moses. Come on, some of God. Don't let us stay here. Three days, they're looking for water. Amen. Most of us can't go a day without water. Come on, sir. Three days, no water. Sometimes you think of your pain. You think of your issue. You think of where's the water? Where are you trying to take us? You got to think on the one who leaves you, whether it be your Sunday school teacher rather be your pastor, your overseer. Imagine what they were feeling. I know, and I'm sure Moses felt, or he could have felt, or I imagine he felt like, I know these folk don't think I don't know what I'm doing. Come on, somebody. Amen. I, they got to trust the God in me to go 24 hours without water, and another 24 without water, and another 24 without water. I'm the same one that took them to the Red Sea, and for three days,
days, 72 hours, and no water. 72 hours, we're dry. 72 hours, 72 hours, we're thirsty. 72 hours, we're in a dry place. 72 hours, we're in a desert. 72 hours, I can't find no revival. 72 hours, where is the rain? 72 hours, where is God? Come on, somebody. But as a leader, he had to stand and keep his ears to the mouth of God. Come on, somebody. Here are two problems. Here are two problems, I believe. Some of you can relate to the same problems that Israel encountered while in the wilderness. Some of you can relate right now. Amen. The Bible, the problem number one. For three days they found no water. Come on, somebody. Isn't that like? Amen. Amen. The third, the second thing was, amen, when they found the water, it was bitter water. Stay with it. Tell your neighbor, stay with it now. Praise our God. Imagine here, some of you are right there, right Right, you're right at this place right now. Amen. It was just last month you were running around the church. It was just last week you got good news. I can't hear nobody. It was last year, 2012. Might have been an awesome year for you, but 2013 hasn't been such a great year. And on and on and on. Here it is. They had a wonderful testimony. They singing about the horse and the rider got drowned. They saw the enemy judge by God. They saw the power in the victory of God at work. Everybody praising God. Everybody happy. And now you tell us to keep moving. And you move us to a place where there's a desert. You move us to a place where there's no water. Come on somebody. Have you ever had good news on a Tuesday and on Wednesday? Amen. Something hit your life that caused your heart to drop. That caused disappointment. Anybody trying to understand what's this new season in your life? Any trying to find, trying to understand why? How is it? Amen. It seemed like uh, that the horse and rider and he was drowned. But now you in another test. Uh, another experience. I can't hear nobody. Uh, glory. That's how it is sometimes. Uh, amen. Sister Roberta in the Christian walk. Uh, glory. Uh, after you go from one victory, uh, here comes another test. Uh, here comes another trial. Uh, this is not a Red Sea test. Uh, this is not about take your staff uh, and launch it on the water. This is about you got to trust me. Uh, you don't understand but you got to trust God. I can hear you heard me say the other week as I echo Elder Sergeant with the word said some trust in horses other trust in chariots but we will put our trust in God. Come on somebody. The Bible said they that put their trust in the Lord will not be ashamed. Somebody is in the desert and amen your enemy is saying where's your God now? Where is the blessing you testified about? Where's your water now? Come on somebody. Wasn't it just last week you were praising God that God saved your son that God saved your daughter that the Lord just saved your husband and now this week he cutting the food and your child don't even want to come to church but I tell you baby stand the test this is not the end of the story as I told you in time past the last thing you will see is not your enemy the last thing you will see is the victory somebody give God a shout of praise come on give God a shout of praise Are you all right? Praise our God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. For three days, they found no water. Have you, amen, anybody come up sometime, you'll be searching for something. You'll be searching for a breakthrough. You'll be searching for an opportunity. You'll be searching for an answer to prayer. You'll be searching for another revelatory word. You'll be searching God. Sometimes the water is. Ain't nobody prophesying to you. Ain't nobody giving you a word. You go to church and to the revival. They call everybody out but you. And you send the water I need is a prophecy. The water I need is an encouragement. The water I can't hear nobody. The water you need sometimes is insight. Sometimes it's an answer. But no water. And you got to trust the Lord. I'm trying to tell somebody that God said trust him. And the Bible says they found no water. Amen. And the Bible says, and when they came to Marah, finally, amen, they go through a test. Amen. Three days, no water. Finally, they get to water. Mother Sergeant, Minister Hall. Oh, amen. Now there's hope. Water. Woo. I knew God would do it. While they're on their pathway. See, you're on your journey now. They're on their path. They are in the will of God. They are not out of the will of God. They are in the will of God. Follow.
following the direction of God. And then as they follow the direction of God, they encounter an entrapment at the Red Sea. They encounter the challenge of the Red Sea. They get through the Red Sea and they go through the wilderness the way God said. And now here we are, three days following you and following the will of God. And for three days, as we follow you on our path, as we follow you on our destiny, as we follow you in the will of God, there are no water for three days, but you're in the will of God. No opportunity, no breakthrough, or whatever it is you're looking for, but yet you're still in the path of God. Just because trouble hits you, it doesn't mean you are sin or you out of the will of God. Amen. Oftentimes your faith is being challenged. Oh, glory to God. And so here, the revelatory insight here is for three days. And now, after three days of no water, they come to a place called Mara. Amen. Now there's water. I mean, when nobody tasted the water just yet, glory, there's water. That's when you come to a season in your life uh, where you see a glimpse of hope. Uh, I can't hear nobody. Uh, feel like this is uh, my destiny. Uh, feel like this is just what God uh, has for me. Uh, amen. Now uh, you see hope. Uh, now you see a breakthrough. Uh, now you get a prophecy. Uh, come on, somebody. Now you see a chance. Uh, you meet the water. However, uh, there's a problem uh, with the thing you're looking for. Uh, now that the blessing has entered your life, uh, it's not lent to enter your life without a challenge. Uh, there's a problem. Huh? Amen. Good news is we got water. Bad news is it's bitter. I can't hear no good news. Huh? We got water. Huh? Somebody say bad news. Huh? It's bitter. I can't hear that. Somebody say good news. Huh? We found water. I can't hear nobody. Say good news. Huh? We found water. Huh? Bad news. Huh? It's bitter. Come on. Huh? We thank you that your words are the effectual further prayer of a righteous Avail it much. We come, God, to cause a great avail in the things of the Spirit. A great happening, a great movement tonight. There's a call a high alert through prayer. Join me. I'll see you there at the Family Prayer Fusay going to the five boroughs of New York City and beyond. That water bitter. Amen. First they find no water. Finally find water. Oh, come on. Now there's the high. Now the low. And finally the water is bitter. We can't drink it. Amen. That word moral or bitter, it means angry. It means discontent. It means heavy. Come on, somebody. Certain things that are bitter. Certain things that are, amen, don't go your way. Are you all right today? Sometimes it's full of pain. Have you ever did the will of God? Amen. And behind doing the will of God, there's pain. Amen. Bitter means grievous, distressful. Sometimes things are sorrowful. You all in the will of God, but something happens that sorrows your spirit. Amen. This is the reality in the Christian walk. There are disappointments. They will come and go. There's going to be some days where you're going to be so happy. There's going to be some hits that will cause your heart to sink. Our good news, you got water. Bad news is bitter water. I don't hear nobody. God, what are you up to? He said, don't get off the path. I'm going to show you something in the path. I'm going to show you something in a hard time. I'm going to show you something in a sorrowful time. I'm going to show you something in a bitter time. I can't hear nobody saying nothing here. God, is there revelation in here? The Bible says, that, mm -hmm. it says, amen. Come on, read the 23rd verse. Help me out, son. It says what? And when they came to Mara, uh -huh. they could not drink of the waters of Mara. I got the water, but I can't enjoy my water. I got the blessing. I can't enjoy my blessing yet. I done found the house I want, but can't move into it yet. I know that's my job, but they're telling me no. Whatever it is, you're on the pathway. I 
know, come on somebody, you've been ordained as a prophet, you've been ordained as a preacher, you've been launched into your, your ministry, you've been launched into the will of God, you own your journey, but now there is a bitter encounter that you don't understand. I want to encourage somebody today, I can't hear nobody, amen, let me just pause and tell you, some of you, if you've been watching the news of about this lady by the name, by the name of Antoinette Tuff out of Georgia, come on somebody, this young black woman in Georgia, y'all ain't saying nothing here, amen, she went to work as usual, according to her story, she was kind of late for work, amen, in a position that she normally would fill because of her lateness and had her delayed in the front office of the school, meanwhile, here comes a trouble, amen, a troubled young man by the age of 20, amen, he's got an MK, what you call those, a what, a MK what? MK-47, one of them really not a pistol, honey, not a water gun, amen, but a thing that the magazine, the magazine is what holds the bullets, amen, got 50, amen, rounds of ammunition in it. He come loaded, he's on a mission, he's going to do like the other folk did, amen, when they went into schools and massacred children and massacred teachers, he decided that day the demons that drove him, the trouble that drove him, amen, amen, drove him to the school with an assignment, amen, during the end of the school day to kill up the children, kill up the parents, amen, shoot up the police officers, oh come on somebody, hallelujah, amen, but when he gets to the front officer, who's at the front office, not just anybody, it was a woman by the name of Antoinette Tuff, y'all ain't say nothing, amen, come on glory, tough, 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 amen, your last name is tough in the Holy Ghost, I can hear nobody, yes sir, yes look, this black woman, amen, if you listen to her, she, amen, somehow, amen, they get a hold of 911. She's on the line of the 911 operator. The operator's last name is McCrae, amen. So she's talking to the operator. She said, amen, tell him this young man is in, he's in, amen. She tells the story, and you also listen to the dialogue with the 911 operator as, amen, according to Anthony Tuffer, according to her encounter, amen, the account of her story. He's in there. He had been shooting her. He shot up at the ceiling. He was in and out shooting up at the cops. He walked out of the office getting ready, amen, with his machine gun because he heard movement as the children and different ones were leaving the building. Amen. She tells him, she's in the office, amen, and she tells him, come on back inside. Now, she could have said, gone out there, and then she could have slipped out the back door. She said, come on back inside. Amen. The bottom line is she talked to this young man with calm and skill. As the young man began to disclose, she realized, she said, I realized he was troubled. She said, but my companion passion kicked in and I began to talk to him out of a heart of compassion she said I was afraid she said but I talked to him you can hear her say to him amen come on inside then she would tell the operator what he said and she said he said he want to kill all the cops and then the operator said well tell him amen do thus and so and she would say sir amen put your gun over to the side amen the young man put the gun over to the side she said sir what you say sir you want to drink your water she she said he gonna drink his water. She's telling the operator. But meanwhile, the whole time she's calm. Amen. He said he gonna lay on the floor. She said go ahead and lay on the floor. But the bottom line, you gotta listen to it. Amen. But he begins to disclose that he's troubled and he feels like killing himself. She said to him, sir, I felt like that too. She said last year when my husband left me after 33 years of marriage. I thought, I'm paraphrasing. She said I thought it was all over. She said I wanted to kill myself, but I didn't, sir. Amen. She said, sir. I love you. You could have shot us up or you could have hit us up, but you didn't. I'm going to let them know. And she keeps talking to him. Well, the bottom line, I don't know why her husband left her after 33 years. She began to tell the young man, I felt like killing myself too, but you don't have to. I don't know all of what she went through. All I know, one thing, that that season in her life was her water, but it was bitter. I can't hear nobody say, Gloria, but that bitter water was leading her to something greater. I said the bitter water is leading you to something greater. I come to prophesy to you. I come to prophesy to me. I come to prophesy to everybody that your bitter water is going to lead you to something greater. Come on and shout glory. Bitter water. What is Bitter water. Bitter water is for my glory. Bitter water is for his glory. Bitter water. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. It's water, but it's bitter. I don't hear nobody shout glory. I know the plan I have for your life is 
a plan of good and not evil. I know what the devil wants you to believe. He wants you to believe that you're going to die in your bitter season. You're not going to die in your bitter season. 